And okay, let's talk about stress management and getting control of stress. I'm gonna be, I'm doing this on my knees. That's kind of weird, right? Uh, so here we go. How do you deal with stress? How do you get rid of it completely? I know the first six months of 2020 have been stressful. If you have not been affected by the events of the global economies, of the pandemic, of what's been going on around you know, racial equality and some of the harm that that's causing and how we really got to take control of that right now. The identity gender kicks on, the political agendas kick on. It's been nuts. And so our stress levels are no doubt creeping up, right? So it's been very difficult for us to kind of stay in control of ourselves, but I really want to just help you here and let you know that stress is something that you invite, accept and allow into your life. So if you are drawn to the drama and you are drawn to other people's agendas or the fact that your importance is so much greater than somebody else's, you're gonna get stressed when somebody gets in your way or upsets the, the apple cart. You know, they just do things that are gonna get to you. So let's be very clear about some of the things that are, are at play here. Other people's agendas and other people's deadlines and other people's timelines are normally not as important as you think they are. So it's really important that you assess with them and set expectations with them about what will the outcome be and when will it happen. We're high achievers. We've been told you must get things done super fast and if you don't get them done super fast, the world will end. And so to please a family member or a friend or a peer at work or a boss, we just go at 100 miles an hour without ever questioning when does this really need to be done? And that timeline is a real issue. I think knowing somebody else's agenda about when they actually need it will give you some time freedom and it will reduce your stress. Now, tied to that is our own self-importance. You know, I mentioned we're high achievers. We're all labeling ourselves as something. And so we think we have to perform in a particular way. It's why we drive in the car, you know, to pick up the kids and get all stressed and anxious about it. And you shouldn't be stressed driving your car around. It's a real pleasurable experience sitting behind the wheel of a car and a throbbing engine. You know, that's a pleasurable thing. When we were 16, 17, 18, whenever you'd started to learn to drive, it was a really nice experience. It should still be that way for you. And if it's stressful and other drivers are getting in your way, don't worry about that. You've got to calm down what's important in your life. So that's the second area is we think everything's super important. And we think we have to rush around and we've got these expectations on ourselves that we are high achievers. Just don't let that happen. You know, and the last bit I'm gonna to say to you here is future anxiety. We get stressed about the future. We worry about what's going to happen, either in the journey it will take to get there or the end result. And I will tell you, your thoughts are frequently never real. And the way you think about the future and the anxiety you attach to it is not often the way it plays out. In fact, less than 10% of the time, maybe even 5% of the time, will it ever play out the way that you think about it? The only way it ever plays out the way you think about it is if you've written down detailed a description of exactly what's gonna happen, what it's gonna feel like, and specific visualization tasks that you've done every day to get to your goal. But people don't do that. So if you're just in survival mode and day by day by day by day and you're fearing the future, that's where your stress is coming from. It's time to take control of that. So that's where the stress comes from. What are we gonna to do to deal with it? Well, the first thing we're gonna do is relax our face and just be very calm and just be zen. And I don't just mean the face. I'm actually talking about our bodies. Relax our shoulders, relax our muscles, do some breathing, go for a walk. And then when you're ready, get the heart pumping, get some exercise, whether that be yoga, whether that be calisthenics, whether that be running, jogging, skipping, swimming, cycling, you pick it up, but you've got to get to the point where your heart is pumping. When we move, cortisol decreases. Exercise is a great way to reduce stress. And you've probably heard this, but what I'm, I'm trying to ramp it down a bit. Before getting all that heart pump stuff, you've got to be in control of just walking. And can you walk without pain? And breathing. And can you breathe without pain? And relaxing. And is your body, are you relaxing from head to toe? Fully relaxed. So you relax all the muscles in your face, all the muscles across your chest and shoulders, all the muscles down to your toes. Full relaxation. And if you wanna look at relaxation, progressive relaxation, we can do that. Hey, listen, I'm gonna bring the coaches here, we're gonna interview them, we're gonna to talk to people who are experts on breathing techniques, experts on walking, experts on getting to the gym, 
health and fitness are going to coach you and give you value. So I'm going to bring all those guys into this Facebook group and they are going to be stress relieving activities, but it starts with your body, how you handle your physiology. And if you carry the stress in with you, people can see it. I was at the school today and I saw this lady. She didn't say a word to me. Man, was she stressed. She's barking at the kid. Where's your brother? She's barking at the brother when the brother turned up. She goes in the, she hasn't spoken to me by the way. She gets in the car and now I can't hear her, but I can see her in the car. It is a ball of stress and anxiousness. And I'm like, whoa, if that's how the world is feeling right now, I just saw it in a microcosm. So here's how we're going to fix it. Physiology first. We're going to relax. We're going to breathe. We're going to walk. We're going to get some sweat. We're going to pump some blood through our system. Get that movement in and it will change your life. All of these things are life changing when you master your body. Second thing, let's think about language and what we're saying. What you say makes such a difference to your stress levels. If you are a complainer, if you are judging, and if you care about what everybody else thinks about you, and then you verbalize exactly that, you know, what did your mum say? My mum said this great phrase, and we should live by it. If you have nothing nice to say, do not say it. That's a great way to start to learn how to use language in a more productive and constructive way. And so one of the great lessons I learned about giving employees feedback is to try and give them two or three praise comments before you give them the constructive criticism or the constructive angle on, hey, have you thought about? And that's the way to look at your own life. How, mu how much more praise, how much more appreciation can you give people? How much more thanks can you give to them? Can you write a thank you card today? Can you send a thank you message? Can you send an I love you message? It's just going to increase the level of positivity that you're giving out. You're going to get more back. That's going to reduce your stress. And you're not going to be thinking about complaining. You're not going to be thinking about judging people. You're not going to be accusatory. You're not going to be making assumptions that are going to stress you out. Physiology first. Watch what you are saying. We just don't need to do this. Shut it up. Next, I love this. We, we, I'm pumped up, getting excited about this. Next, we, you know, we've got to think about the thought process. And you know, I'm going to shock you with what I'm about to say because I have only just learned it not too long ago. We all live in a virtual reality. So when I see VR and XR and all these cool new things and they call them virtual reality, I'm like, well, isn't that what we've been doing for the last billion years? Here's why. We all sense feelings, you know, seeing things, feeling things, thinking, um, smelling things. Our senses is where it all starts for our brain. Our brain learns through sensation, sensing. Those sensations are then converted in the brain to perception, how we perceive things. And you know, because of all the arguments you've ever had in your life, that we don't always perceive things the same as our best friends. And so it only takes one glass, half glass of wine maybe, to have a little argument with somebody who perceives the world differently to you. But I've not even got into thoughts yet. We're still living in a virtual reality. This isn't real. We sense things differently. We perceive things differently. And so what does that then mean? We feel different. We experience different emotions. And those emotions are at different levels. So we have different experiences of how we feel. And they're very different from the next person. Now, the curious thing, is that we can all come together and have a common view of what the world actually is all about when we have all this uniqueness. There's just so much uniqueness. Isn't that crazy? Um, sensing, perceiving, emotion, feeling, what do we feel? The next thing is our thoughts. Once we are feeling something, then we have thoughts and our thoughts take place. Knowing what to do with your thoughts and observing them is critical. If you think, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad, and you reinforce that, it's gonna to be tough. You're gonna to have that negative spiral. You're gonna feel stressed. It's gonna increase your stress. So start to observe your thoughts a little bit better. This is why, by the way, people advocate for journaling. We will get people on here, gratitude experts. You must journal, you must write your thoughts down. You must think down about who, what you're grateful for. Spend more time thinking about the good things and noting them than you do just dwelling in your head with this 600 words as a minimum in a minute, telling yourself a story. And I've got some clients right now that I'm working with and they are having a real hard time stopping the story. It is going 500 miles an hour, 600, 800, 1200 words a minute at times. When we're in high peak state and stress, our words and the internal dialogue or how we talk to ourselves goes really, really, really fast. We cannot keep up. So it comes out as stress and that's really, really difficult for us. So just be very, very aware about thoughts. The last thing to happen is action. 
We don't take action until all those other things have taken place. We have to sense the world, we perceive the world, we feel the world, then we think about it. That's how the brain works. This is how we can rewire our brain. This is neuroscience, by the way, guys. We will get the neuroscience specialists on here. We will get the best people in the world in this group, and we will be able to give them a platform to educate you on what goes on inside our brain, our chemistry with the neuromodulators, and how these things react, and then the, uh, the neurochemicals that are released that make such a difference to the synapses and how we can rewire our brain for success, for what we want in life. It's powerful stuff. Stress reduce. I've probably stressed you out talking about it. We live in a virtual reality, <laughs> but you've got to be worried about your thoughts. Number one, body. Number two, what you say. Three, what are you thinking? Last, if you're still overwhelmed and you have future anxiety, most of that is because you don't have a plan. You've got to have a plan. And so here's what I'll say to you. If you have plans, you can bring peace. If you don't have plans, you're going to increase your stress. You'll not know what to do next day with your long task list. You have all these things to do, but you're not going to know how to do them all because you didn't plan and you didn't identify what's important, what's mundane, and what I don't need to place so much importance on. And I think that's really important you understand. You don't have to place so much importance in everything you do. Whew, saying an awful lot. Number one, body. Number two, what you say. Number three, thinking. What are our thoughts? What are they really? Observe them, write them down. Don't believe what you think. This is the source of mental health. Guess what? We're gonna have mental health people come on this show. People who've struggled with mental health and have a real story to tell. I have a story to tell, and maybe we'll hear that one day. But you're gonna hear for some people who've been through some really rough times, and they're gonna give you the education about how you get yourself back on your feet and how you do it the fast way and how you get control of what goes on inside this little matter. It's really, really important you understand and you tune in for some of those sessions. I really hope uh, that we can give you great value there. Now, uh, Mark Cuban. Uh, don't have any affiliation with Mark Cuban, but if you don't know him, a successful businessman, moved to Dallas in his 20s, uh, created a software business after working for a person he didn't really want to work with anymore, sold it for $6 million, and then the rest is history. You've seen him on the TV show Shark Tank. He is also the owner of the uh, local basketball team here, the Dallas Mavericks. Very successful businessman involved in all kinds of things, but he has a really nice turn of phrase relating to stress, which I think you should hear. When you're hiring people, you want stress reducers. Stress reducers solve problems. That's the phrase he used. Stress reducers solve problems. Now, he was talking about something in a slightly different context, but the four words should give you a clue about what's going on for you. If you aren't solving your problems, all you're doing is just paying them homage. You're just saying, I've got problems. And the stress goes up and up and up. The more you hold it in your body, the more you tell about it, the more you think about it, the more you do not plan, your problems go up. But when you solve problems, you become a problem solver, your stress goes down. So I'm gonna leave you with that. I think that's a really nice way to end it. So thanks to Mark Cuban. One of you, maybe one day Mark will meet. You only live about 15 minutes away. So hopefully this is my call to arms. Maybe Mark Cuban can give me some coaching on teach me how to make a huge success of working in the Dallas area. But look, I'm hoping this was good value for you. I've said everything I needed to say for now and I look forward to catching up with you real soon. Cheers, bye.